Mr. Chairman, I rise today to honor John Hobalt, a native of Joliet, Illinois. He was one of the great unsung heroes of the Apollo program. Politicians are fond of citing President Kennedy's famous speech made in this room at a joint session of Congress more than 50 years ago to, quote, commit this nation before this decade is out to landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. Politicians like to imagine that anything is possible if the right politician and speechwriter can muster just the right words to stir a country to action. But engineers know differently. If you do not have a workable engineering concept and a set of design parameters that respect both available resource limitations and engineering reality, then no amount of fine words from politicians is going to make any difference. Dr. John Hobalt provided that crucial engineering concept that made the 10-year success of the Apollo program possible. John Hobalt came from humble beginnings, working 16 hours a day on his family's dairy farm near Joliet, Illinois, where he developed an early interest in aviation, building model airplanes in his free time. He graduated from Joliet Township High School and Joliet Junior College. He obtained a bachelor's and master's degree from the University of Illinois in civil engineering. He then went on to obtain a PhD and serve as an engineer at NASA's Langley Research Center. His contributions to the U.S. space race in the 1960s were vital to NASA's successful moon landing. He is best known for his advocacy of Lunar Orbit Rendezvous, the crucial mission design decision that proved essential to carry the Apollo crew safely to the moon and back in 1969. Dr. Hobalt, along with several of his colleagues at Langley, became convinced that this relatively obscure technique was the only feasible way to land on the moon by the end of the decade. Initially, NASA rejected Dr. Hobalt's plan for being too complicated and risky, but like the world's greatest innovators, Dr. Hobalt didn't let initial failure stop him. Despite opposition from NASA and from leading rocket scientists at the time, Dr. Hobalt tenaciously advocated for lunar orbit rendezvous. To convince the decision makers to, at NASA to consider his plan, Dr. Hobalt took the bold step of writing a letter directly to the associate administrator of NASA, at the time a clear breach of protocol. Do we want to go to the moon or not, asked Dr. Hobalt. Because of his tenacity, NASA gave the, his idea another chance and eventually approved it. Now, John Hobalt won that argument, despite having all the political winds blowing against him, because he had fundamental engineering reality on his side. It was simply not possible with the engines and boosters that could plausibly be developed in the 1960s to launch a payload that would allow a manned rocket to land in its entirety on the moon, including all of the fuel necessary to return to the Earth. But, as John Hobalt pointed out, if you left the fuel for the return trip in lunar orbit and rendezvoused with the command module after making the lunar landing, then a single Saturn booster, already under design at the Marshall Space Flight Center, could do the job. NASA Administrator George Lowe later said that this pivotal, of this pivotal moment, quote, it is my strongly held opinion that without the lunar rendezvous mode, the Apollo would not have succeeded, and without John Hobalt's letter, we might not have chosen the lunar orbit rendezvous mode. The lunar rendezvous mode has been described by space historians as, quote, Langley's most important contribution to the Apollo program and is widely credited for allowing the United States to accomplish the goal of President John F. Kennedy uh, that he set out in 1961 to land a man on the moon by the end of the decade. Dr. Hobalt received numerous awards for his work, including NASA's Medal of Exceptional Scientific Achievement. He was elected to the National Academy of Engineering and was the first recipient of Joliet Junior College's Distinguished Alumni Award. Additionally, the Joliet Historical Museum has, is home to a permanent exhibit dedicated to Dr. Hobalt and to his family titled The Soaring Achievement of John C. Hobalt. They have now declared July 20th, 2014, the 45th anniversary of the moon landing as Hobalt Family Day at the museum. The museum will be open to the free to the public each July 20th to encourage families to learn about Joliet's local contribution to one of humankind's greatest scientific achievements. Dr. Hobalt retired after a distinguished career in 1985. He and his family remain noted philanthropists and supporters of the community of Joliet, touching countless individuals with their generosity. Dr. Hobalt passed away on April 15, 2014, at the age of 95. His life is an example of the impact that a determined, intelligent, and passionate individual can have. I rise today to remember Dr. Hobalt for his outstanding contributions to American science and engineering. 
in a society where we seem to celebrate mainly the accomplishments of our heroes in sports and entertainment, as well as those who ride our rockets off into space, it's important also to celebrate the heroes of science and engineering who make the modern world possible. Thank you, and I yield back. <laughs>